Okay, so get this. SpaceX wants to make your internet 10 times faster. 10 times? Yeah, 10 times. We're talking downloading a whole movie in seconds from space. Wow. I know, right? Yeah. We're diving into their plans for Starlink today. And trust me, this FCC filing we found, it's anything but boring. Yeah, satellite internet. I mean, it used to be kind of a joke, you know, but SpaceX is really like pushing the limits of what's possible. Totally. Yeah. Remember, like, even trying to check email on satellite internet back in the day? It took forever. Yeah, yeah. You'd, like, click send and then go make a sandwich, hoping it would actually be sent by the time you got back. Right. But now Starlink is already, what, 25 to 220 millipedes? Which, honestly, for most of us, it's enough for what we do online. But SpaceX is like, nah, we could do way better. Yeah, and it's not just about, you know, being faster just to be faster. This kind of speed increase, it's a big deal. Think about bridging that digital divide everyone's always talking about, all those remote areas that are stuck with, like the old slow internet. They could suddenly have the same speeds as like big cities. Okay, so less digital divide, more like digital connection for everyone. Yeah. I like it. But how are they going to make that happen? I mean, this FCC filing mentions these new Gen 2 satellites. What's so special about them? Well, imagine taking like all the internet infrastructure of a small city and launching it into space. Wow. That's basically what these Gen 2 satellites are. They're massive. It's actually why SpaceX needs its Starship rocket just to get them off the ground. Wow. Yeah, and it's not just about size. These Gen 2 satellites are using, like, cutting-edge tech to get the absolute best performance possible. Okay, so we've got bigger, more powerful satellites. Right. What else? This FCC filing also mentioned something about changing the satellite's orbits. Right, yeah. They're planning to bring the satellites into a lower orbit. Okay. And what that does, it directly affects something called latency. Basically, it's that delay you get between, like, clicking something online and actually seeing it happen. Oh, yeah, yeah. By bringing the satellites lower, they're cutting down the distance those signals have to travel so you get a smoother, more responsive experience. No more lag. So no more blaming the lag for messing up my game right. <laughs> I'll be a pro. Exactly. But, you know, this isn't the first time we've heard SpaceX talk about super fast internet speeds. That's true. I mean, back in 2016, didn't they promise gigabit speeds too? You're right. SpaceX does have a history of, let's say, setting ambitious goals. Yeah. But even if they might be a little overly optimistic sometimes, you have to admit their track record is pretty impressive. They usually get it done. Yeah. They've really shaken up the space industry, you know? So it's not crazy to think they could do the same thing with the internet. So we're, like, cautiously optimistic. I'd say so. I mean, SpaceX isn't operating in a vacuum, right? There's mm -hmm. regulations, there's competition, and the technology itself is challenging. They've got a lot to deal with. Okay, so big plans, but not a done deal. What kind of roadblocks are we talking about here? I mean, this FCC filing, it wasn't just a brag, right? Yeah, you're right. This wasn't just a PR move. Actually, last year, the FCC actually denied Starlink a pretty big chunk of funding. Oh, really? How much are we talking? Almost a billion dollars. Uh -huh. It was supposed to help them expand broadband access in those underserved areas we were talking about. A billion dollars? That's, that's not nothing. What was the FCC's reasoning there? Basically, they said, prove it. Prove it. Yeah. They weren't convinced that Starlink could deliver on those promises, the speeds, the low latency, especially in those really hard to reach places. They even called Starlink's technology nascent, which, you know, from the FCC, that's like saying, it's a cute idea, kid, but show us it actually works. A little bit of a reality check for SpaceX there. How'd they take that? Well, Elon Musk being Elon Musk, he, uh, he publicly disagreed with the FCC's assessment. He was arguing that Starlink could be way more effective than traditional internet providers at bridging that digital divide. Right. And that holding back funding would just stifle innovation, basically saying, get out of the way, we got this. Classic clash, right? Silicon Valley moving fast and breaking things. And then you've got the government agencies. They're a little more cautious. Right. But it's not just the FCC SpaceX has to worry about, right? What about, like the big telecom companies. Yeah. They've got to be watching this pretty closely. Oh, absolutely. You're talking about disrupting a multi-billion dollar industry here. Companies like AT&T, Verizon, they built their empires on those old cable and fiber optic networks. They're not just going to roll over. Right. They're watching Starlink very, very carefully. And they are not afraid to, let's say, use their influence to protect what they've got. Right. 
Competition can be a good thing, though, right? Pushes everyone to be better. Yeah, in theory, sure. And for the average person, more competition usually means better service, maybe even lower prices. But these telecom giants, they know how to play the game. They can lobby for regulations that make things harder for Starlink, maybe even tie them up in court cases to slow them down. They've got options. Okay, so it's not just about launching satellites. It's about navigating like this whole web of regulations and competition. Exactly. And speaking of competition, didn't SpaceX also announce they want to get into the mobile phone market? They did, yeah. How's that going to work? They're working with T-Mobile to offer a cell service that uses Starlink's network. The idea is, even if you're in the middle of nowhere, no cell towers for miles, you can still make calls, send texts, all using your regular phone just through the satellite. Okay, now that's kind of cool. Imagine that. You're out hiking, totally off the grid, mm -hmm. and you can still post that awesome selfie. Right. I bet the big telecom companies weren't thrilled about that either. You got it. AT&T and Verizon, they've been talking to the FCC, saying that SpaceX's tech could cause interference with the networks they've already built. Basically saying, hey, we've invested a ton of money in this. SpaceX can't just waltz in and mess it all up. It's going to be a battle for the future of, well, the internet, mobile phones, the whole thing. High stakes, for sure. So for everyone listening who's been following this whole saga, what does it all mean? Well, on the one hand, you gotta admit, it's pretty exciting. SpaceX is really pushing the limits here. They could completely change how we connect to the internet, especially for people who've been stuck with those terrible old internet options. But at the same time, there are some big challenges, technologically and when it comes to regulations. So maybe we're not all downloading movies in seconds just yet. Right. But the future of the internet, it's up for grabs. And how it all plays out, that's a story that's still being written. So excitement, uncertainty, all mixed together. It's like we're on the edge of like a whole new world, hmm. but we don't know what's waiting for us out there. But let's say for a second that SpaceX pulls it off. The FCC gives them the, okay, they beat out the competition. What does that world actually look like? What does it mean for someone like you listening to have that kind of speed? Well, first off, imagine no more internet dead zones. Oh, man. You're like watching your favorite show and then bam, the spinning wheel of doom, the worst. Or you're trying to video chat with family and the connection's like, nope, not today. Uh, the worst. With Starlink, those days are over. It doesn't matter where you are, you're connected. It'd be like trading that bumpy dirt road for a super highway, but for your internet. Exactly. And it's not just about, you know, watching your shows without a hiccup. Think about education. Oh, yeah. Kids in remote areas, they could finally have those amazing online classes, all the resources, just like everyone else. Leveling the playing field. I like it. Yeah. What about healthcare? I mean, telemedicine, that could be huge. Huge is an understatement. We're talking potentially changing how healthcare works, especially for people who don't have easy access to doctors. Right. Good internet means doctors could check in with patients remotely, specialists could do virtual visits, even like some surgeries could be done remotely with robots. Like having the best doctors in the world right there in your living room. That's pretty amazing. But what about the economic impact? I mean, faster internet, that means more businesses, more jobs. Yeah, absolutely. We've already seen how much the internet has changed how we work. Now, amp up the speed. Yeah. The possibilities are mind blowing. Entrepreneurs working remotely, collaborating with people across the world, it all becomes so much easier. Hmm. We could see whole industries change, new ones pop up that we haven't even thought of yet. It's like the wild west of the internet all over again. Yeah. So much potential. But here's a thought. If SpaceX actually pulls this off, won't that just start a whole new race? What do you mean? You know, like other companies, maybe even countries, they'll want to get in on this. Well, right? for like, sure. It could be like the space race, but for the internet. Who can make it the fastest, the cheapest, the most accessible? A race to connect the world. Not bad, yeah. right? But are there, like, downsides we should be thinking about? Yeah, I mean, more competition isn't always a good thing. It could lead to a messier internet, different companies and countries all trying to be in charge. We might see some places with amazing internet, others get left behind. And then there's the whole question of who makes the rules. Mm. Who's in control of this new internet? How do we make sure it's used for good? Man, that's a lot to consider. So for everyone listening, what should we be keeping an eye on? Three big things. One, what happens with SpaceX's plan? If the FCC gives them the green light, that's huge. Two, who else jumps in? 
what are the other companies doing? Is there a new internet space race about to begin? And three, what do governments do? Do they embrace this new tech or try to control it? It's going to be interesting to see how it all plays out. Who knows? Maybe a few years from now, we'll look back and be like, remember those old, slow internet days? Ugh. Well, this has been a fascinating deep dive. Thanks for joining us as we explore the future of the internet and what SpaceX's Starlink could mean for all of us. My pleasure. Always fun to geek out about the future of tech. Until next time, keep looking up and keep exploring. This is The Deep Dive, signing off.